we're, we're live. We're live from Brownstone Studios. <laughs> I'll just wait a second if any live listeners are going to come on. Um, I guess it's still 9.59. So if you are a pre-recorded class viewer, you can just, um, you know, wait for, listen to me until I get on the mat or just, oh, hello. There are live. There are live people out there in the world. Um, I'm glad to know you are here, whoever you are. Um, I have some suspicions about who you are. Okay, so uh, if you were with me yesterday, we're going to do a similar sequence. Um, a lot of um, <laughs> attention to the upper body, um, strengthening the upper body. Uh, as you might remember from yesterday, I added a third set of push-ups because if we are doing our push-ups consistently, uh, you might find that you are stronger. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was thinking about this idea of setting an intention for uh, the yoga practice. And I know for many, many, many years <laughs> going to yoga classes and being invited to set intention, and I was always like, what am I supposed to be thinking right now? Um, <laughs> so I always, you know, it's like, oh, this is the part where I save the world with my yoga class, um, with my practice, but I don't know how to do that. Um, so, but, so anyway, I guess my, my point is that, um, you know, that can seem like a very lofty concept of setting intention for your practice. Um, but the longer I've been teaching and practicing, the more I realize that that, um, that intention for me is often a very simple concept. Um, so I was thinking today that my intention for teaching and my intention for practicing was uh, going to revolve or center on this idea of um, receptivity, just being receptive to uh, to the experience and uh, thinking about, because I, I think today is, is kind of a challenging class. I think uh, backbends tend to be a challenging area of focus for a lot of people because there is, um, it you know, it's counterintuitive to a lot of the shapes that we put our bodies in uh, just in daily life and also um, you're moving back in a lot of instances. Like you're, you're physically moving back into a space that you cannot see. <laughs> and it's a, vulnerable, uh, it's a vulnerable practice. So, uh, so with this idea of receptivity or um, yeah, going into this is really be honest with yourself about where your boundaries are. And I, want to, I always want it to be clear that, I, I think this is one thing that's nice about this format, this um, remote format, is that uh, I don't think that people at home, I'm guessing that they don't feel as much pressure, you don't feel as much pressure to perform the way you might in a studio setting, uh, not having eyes on you. So um, I, I kind of I, I like that concept that, um, that maybe there is a greater opportunity to take an honest look at where your boundaries are. It might also be difficult to push yourself uh, beyond those boundaries. So it's kind of a double-edged sword, like everything. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, be receptive, listen. If you are doing something that feels unsafe, don't just ignore that. <laughs> and don't just ignore that signal. Uh, look at it, communicate with it decide to do something that feels a bit scary this is a this is a this should be hopefully this is a safe space your mat is a safe space where you can make 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 choices okay so i'm gonna stop talking over here start talking over there okay so if you have not get your uh mat all set up have the props uh that you have in your house available to you as we will likely uh, use all of them today. Okay, if you don't have them, stick with me anyway. Okay, I'm gonna turn this baby on. 
this little baby. Okay. Here we go. So today we are going to start our practice in Virasana or Hero's Pose. So knees are going to come together, shins angled apart, toes pointed. If this is already st uh, strenuous on the ankles, then I encourage uh, you to place your shins on some height. So possibly uh, one blanket will suffice. Possibly you need more height underneath your shins to diminish that uh, stretch of the uh, ankles, diminish the, um, the stress there. So as you take a seat between your heels, um, gauge the comfort of the knees. We will be here for five minutes or more. So gauge the comfort of your knees and if your knees are in any pain or even discomfort, I encourage height underneath the hips as well. So um, in the form of a block, a blanket, you know, a dictionary, um, get situated, uh, get some support so that you can feel safe and comfortable coming to this seat and closing your eyes. Place your hands on your thighs and arrive. You have set aside this time in your day, set aside this space in your home. Welcome yourself here. And as you arrive, start the communication with your body, with your emotions, with your mind, check in. First on the physical level, what is calling for attention? Are there areas of discomfort or pain? Listen and respond. You might adjust your position slightly. You might not need to adjust your position. You might just send a signal to those areas. Say, I'm listening. I'm sending some relief in the form of mental energy, in the form of breath, in the form of prana. Whatever words or uh, concept you want to use. And then consider what emotions you have brought into uh, this moment. Consider the patterns of your thinking. Is, are there any thoughts that feel urgent in this moment? Is there something that needs to be solved? Something that needs to be planned? Again, be receptive to this information. And rather than seeing it and saying, bad, go away, <laughs> let's uh, approach this moment with acceptance. And set some of those things aside that may not be necessary at the moment. Recognize that the, this time on the mat is finite. We will go back out into the day. We will face the challenges, return to these thoughts. So allow yourself to be here. Feel your body's connection to the earth. And then from that connection, the length of the spine, the crown of the head growing tall, the chest broad. You might feel the temperature of the room across the exposed skin.
recognize any tension in the face, any unconscious facial expression. Neutralize that expression as the gaze turns in. Breathe in and out through your nostrils and begin Ujjayi Pranayama, the triumphant uprising breath. Characterized by this aspirant sound now with the breath, achieved by drawing a gentle contraction in at the back of the throat. As you come to the breath, you might recognize the qualities of your breathing. There might be places along the breath, along the inhale or the exhale, where there's uh, what might feel ragged or bumpy, st uh, stunted. Rather than encountering um, challenge or encountering difficulty in your practice, and thinking, no, bad, stop. <laughs> uh, let's, again, this idea of being receptive to it, uh, having some recognition, listening, and even some acceptance, even if it's something that you don't want to cultivate. Let's see it and focus on what we do want to cultivate in order to move forward. As you have established a slow and deep breath pattern, I'd like to invite you uh, to start to count the duration of your inhalation. So as you find your next inhale, count, see how long it takes to get to the very tip top of your breath, capping off the lungs at the top, and then try to match that number with the duration of your exhale. And even if you're practiced in this, there is a very strong, um, a strong tendency to push out a lot of air at the beginning of the exhale. So try to regulate the, um, the duration, the, um, the, the pace at which, at, at which you are exhaling. And use this little data collection, this little counting of the breath to keep your mind present with the breath and give you some uh, guidance of how you are breathing. Please follow your breathing through three more cycles using the Ujjayi Prana technique with the one-to-one -one ratio of inhale to exhale.
Kundalini Yoga follows your Ujjayi Pranayana breath through three cycles, uh, please bring your hands together at heart center. We will chant Om together three times before uh, the moving practice. Please join along so I can hear you. Exhale, empty the lungs, and inhale for the first of three ohms. to your heart, release your palms to your thighs, then slowly lift your head as you open your eyes. Okay, we're going to come forward of our knees, place any props off to the side, and we will move into a twist. So knees together, swing your legs out to the right, nestle the right foot into the arch of the left foot, sit down on your left hip. Take your arms up like football goalpost, tall spine, and then exhale, start to revolve from right to left using the abdominal muscles to start this revolution from the earth, from the uh, low abdomen, moving across the ribs, and now place the hands down, right hand to left thigh, left hand behind, left shoulder on the back, collarbones broad, eventually taking the gaze back over the shoulder or just towards the wall behind you, chin parallel to the floor, noticing how the hands against the, against the thigh and the hand against the floor give you this increased mobility in the upper back, stacking that on top of adding that to the uh, internal rotation, or the, yeah, the, <laughs> the rotation of the inner body, the abdomen. Again, receptivity. Notice what you're feeling, where you're feeling, and how do you communicate with the physical experience. Sending attention, sending breath, sending prana to those spaces that are making noise, that are calling for your attention. Let's inhale, come back through center, a little counter twist. Keep the knees together, send the feet out to the left. Uh, <laughs> left ankle or foot into the arch of the right foot. Okay, lower ribs in and back, keep that stability and length in the low body. Uh, arms out like football goalposts, and then begin to revolve the chest, the uh, abdomen from left to right. So the left hip is likely to be off of the floor, mine is. Um, that's okay for this particular shape. Now as your awareness moves up the spine from the earth, along the low back, middle back, and now bring the hands to the floor, right hand to the floor, left hand to the right thigh, and use uh, the hands against that resistance to bring more revolution into the upper back. And then eventually the gaze can go back, chin parallel to the floor, collarbones broad, breathe, be receptive. Notice what you're feeling, where you're feeling, send your attention to those areas that are calling for it. Listen. Inhale, back to center, counter twist. And we are going to take a seat on the heels. So again, knees together, toes tucked under. You might manually tuck the outer toes, the smaller toes under. They might have some resistance. 
Okay, this may be, likely will be, very intense for the feet. So keep this position as long as you can tolerate it. Listen to your boundaries. <laughs> and then come up with your uh, tall spine, head over heart, heart over hips, um, hips sinking towards the heels, perhaps some padding between the hips and the heels to alleviate pain and discomfort in the knees. If you have a strap or a strap equivalent, grab it now. Otherwise, do these uh, steps roughly without a strap. And then take the arms forward, holding the strap with the hands shoulder width distance apart. Extend forward through the knuckles, pull the strap taut, and then plug the arms into the shoulder sockets. Be careful not to tilt the pelvis forward, but to keep the lower spine long and abdomen uh, toned. Okay, now start to sweep the arms into the overhead plane, knuckles reaching towards the sky, keeping the shoulder blades drawing down the back, lower ribs in and back, tailbone down, and now just slightly draw the arms back. So maybe it's just an inch, maybe less. Uh, tune less into the uh, depth of the movement and more into what a little, uh, a little intention, a little movement of the arms backward can create sensation-wise. So again, be receptive to how the shapes change the physical experience. And then as the experience of your body changes, start to move your awareness into those affected spaces. And notice those spaces that aren't affected. So we often bring attention to the face. So uh, most poses don't require much uh, expression in the face. So uh, that would be a whole different kind of yoga. There's like face expression yoga. But uh, let the face be neutral. And now begin to widen the hands apart as you draw the strap down behind the back. So take the hands wide at first. We're still early on in the practice as we start to open up the chest, roll the shoulders, and being honest with myself here, I'm not going to tuck my toes anymore. Um, if you can keep tucking the toes, keep tucking the toes. <laughs> okay, so possibly synchronizing movement with breath here as you take the strap up and then draw it back. You might pause in particular places where your shoulders feel um, like you're meeting with the most resistance. You might experiment over time with bringing the hands closer together. You might focus on one side by bending the opposite elbow. So just be an explorer. Be open-minded about what you might find here. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I am always um, surprised by how much tension I have in my shoulders any given day I come to the mat. And then from here, we're going to place the strap out to the side and come forward into a tabletop position. If you have any props on your mat, move them. You might move blocks to the top of your mat just as preparation for our lunges. And um, yeah, kick out your feet if they are feeling tense, if they are feeling cramped. And uh, we will move into our cat and cow shapes, or the, uh, my friend Matt mentioned they're both shapes that cats would make. <laughs> but uh, for the purpose of distinction, I'm going to stick with the cow description. Uh, okay, anyway, we are going to try to move into our cat pose, so arched back pose, with the inhalation. So push the hands down. Tailbone towards the floor, belly button towards the sky, chin towards the chest, round the back body as you inhale, and then exhale, belly and chest towards the floor, tailbone and gaze lift, contract the back body into what is traditionally known as cow pose, and then inhale to cat. Continue with these two movements. 
synchronizing breath in what may be an um, unfamiliar uh, syncopation. Explore the range of motion of your spine. Again, be receptive. Let the shapes, let the movements bring your attention deeply into your body and in doing so, bringing your awareness into the moment, into the present. To a neutral spine. Right hand below the face, left hand to the back of the skull. As you inhale next, open the chest towards the left wall, take the elbow skyward, gaze skyward, and then exhale, curl in. Left elbow towards right wrist. Inhale, open up. Exhale, curl in. Let the rest of the body move accordingly. So um, adapting for these shapes. Inhale, open left. Exhale, curl in, two more. Inhale, open left. Root through the right knuckles. Exhale, curl in. Last one, inhale, open left. Exhale, curl in, and left hand below the face, right hand to the back of the skull. Inhale, open right, elbow up, gaze up, shoulder blades together. Exhale, shoulder blades apart, curl in. Inhale, open right. Exhale, curl in two. Inhale, open right. Exhale, curl in three. Inhale, open right. Exhale, curl in four. Last one. Inhale, open right. Exhale, curl in. And place the hands below the shoulders. Walk the knees six to eight inches back. Tuck the toes under. Tilt the tailbone up. Like cow pose, elbows back, chin and chest forward, and lower all the way down to the floor. Knees, chest, chin, tailbone high in the air, and now slide forward onto your belly. Arms at your sides, relaxed. Chin on the mat, relax your left leg, and engage your right leg. So my quads are sore from yesterday from this um, call to strong engagement of the right leg. So, uh, so, um, Contract those quadricep muscles. Lengthen back through the right toe. Make the leg uh, straight and strong and then begin to lift the right leg away from the floor, keeping the front of the right hip grounded. Extend and lift, extend and lift, extend and lift, and release the right foot down. Let the heel widen out. Left toes point back, engage the left quadricep muscles. Pull the imaginary tight stocking up your left leg as you reach back through the toes. Uh, strong, strong and long left leg and begin to lift the left leg. Point back through the toes, engage the muscles, keep the left hip bone grounded. Higher, higher, highest and release. Point back through all 10 toes, engage both legs so that the kneecaps pull away from the floor. Push the feet into the floor and engage the legs more. Push the feet into the floor. And now begin to lift the legs. Point and lift. T together the legs lift. Reach. Point. Strong, long legs lifting off of the floor. And release. Place your feet hip width distance apart. Again, toes pointing back. Fronts of the feet grounding. Kneecaps lifting. Lengthen back through the tailbone. Place your wrists by your ribs. Shoulder blades on the back. Collarbones broad. Curl up into the chest. Little bitty baby cobra. Look ma, no hands. Hands hover off of the floor, hugging the shoulder blades strongly onto the back of the chest, using the back muscles to open up and lift the chest. Now, put the hands on the floor, push down into the hands, curl the shoulder blades onto the back of the chest, lengthen the elbows down, drawing the shoulder blades down the back side of the chest. 
Sides and neck back, crown of the head lifts, push the feet down, engage the legs, lengthen back through the tailbone. Isometrically pull the heels of the hands back as you expand the heart forward. Soften the edges of the mouth. Awareness. Listen to the back body. Where are you feeling? What are you feeling? And then slowly lower down, chin to the floor. Tuck the toes, lift the legs. So engage the legs, reach back through the heels, push into the floor, and come up into a plank position. Shoulders over the wrist, push back, downward facing dog, turn the hands out slightly, feet are hip width distance apart. Check in with your dog by giving it a little walk. Listen for the backs of each, the back of each leg. Is one leg longer? Is one leg tighter? Is one leg perpetually longer or tighter? Give that leg a little bit of attention. Again, receptive. Be in your practice. It's not just about achieving these shapes, but doing the shapes in order to have an experience, to have a deeper connection with this physical embodiment, connecting mind and body. Okay, come back to a neutral dog pose, keeping any amount of bend in the knees, hips shift up and back, hands push down and forward, and we're going to do the first of our three sets of push-ups with our downward facing dog between each one. Inhale, come forward to plank. You can always do these on your knees for better alignment and more support. Exhale, lower down chaturanga or bottom of a push-up. Inhale, push up, drawing up through the sides of the waistline. Exhale, push the hips up and back. Downward facing dog, that's one. Four more. Inhale, forward. Exhale, lower. Inhale, press. Exhale, hips go back two. Inhale, forward. Exhale, lower. Inhale, press. Exhale, back three. Inhale, forward. Exhale, lower. Inhale, press. Exhale, back four. Inhale, forward. Exhale, lower. Inhale, press. Exhale, back five. I've, I, lose, I lose track of counting even with five. Okay, right foot towards the center. Left leg lifts straight up and back. Hold your three-legged dog. Push your hands down and forward. As you lift through the back inner thigh, wrap the left, or the left inner thigh, wrap the left outer hip down. So the hips stay at even height. Let the right heel lengthen towards the floor as you engage the right leg, lift into the right kneecap, look to the top of your mat, and exhale, long stride, lunge your left foot to the top of your mat. Hands can be on fingertips or you can utilize those blocks you brought there earlier, hands on the blocks. Deep lunge, right knee to the floor, and just release the hips for a moment. So for me, it just feels like get a little sloppy here, just like the... <laughs> Just like let those hips be heavy. Okay, and then from here, we're gonna tone the legs in. So left heel pulls back, right knee draws forward to scissor the legs, square the hips. And then send the hips back, left toes towards the ceiling, round the spine over the left leg into an approximation of a runner's stretch, possibly moving the blocks or the hands with the blocks back. And then move forward into the lunge, shoulders back, collarbones broad. Move between these two shapes and please pad that back knee if it is hurting by doubling the mat or placing a blanket underneath it. So move through these two shapes, still getting acquainted with the body, now getting acquainted with the front of the left hip, the back, or the front of the right hip, the back of the left leg, more intimately. Pause in one shape or the other. Exercise uh, freedom, autonomy in your practice. We're all in this together, but we, you know, we're all here. We all are having the own, our own experiences. Okay. So we're going to come forward once again into the lunge position. Scissor the legs together, tone them in, bring your hands to your front thigh. Interlace your fingers and press your palms against your thighs. You straighten your elbows and lift your chest. 
Square the hips and chest forward, keeping the legs toning in, and then slowly begin to release the hips down and forward as you tone in. So expanding and contracting, expanding and contracting. Arms to the sides, palms face forward, shoulders roll back. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead, look up. And then possibly start to draw the biceps back, triceps, biceps back behind the ears. Curl the gaze up, look up, look back, lift into the heart. Keep scissoring and expanding, contracting and expanding the legs and hips. And then come back up with the chest, the arms, the head. Press the left hand back into the left thigh, draw back through the sides of the waistline, and then begin to hook your right elbow to the outside of the left thigh. Widen your elbow into, your, pull your elbow into your thigh and widen your thigh into your elbow. Wrap your right wrist towards the left and either choose to stay here or slide the armpit down towards the thigh and bring your hands to prayer. Thumbs to the sternum, widen your elbows apart. Choose to stay here or lift the back knee. Lift the back knee, lift the back thigh, straighten the back leg. Continue to scissor the legs in, expand the legs out, stack the shoulders, look up, be in a twist. Again, identifying boundaries and making choices at the boundary line. Are you pushing? Are you staying? Where do you feel safe practicing today? Give yourself options. Look down, hands down, and press back to downward facing dog. Walk it out. And second set of five push-ups. Inhale forward to plank. Exhale lower, possibly coming to your knees. Inhale, press up, lifting through the sides of the waistline. Exhale, hip shift you back, downward facing dog. One. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale, press, exhale back two. Inhale forward, exhale lower, inhale press, exhale back three. Inhale forward, exhale lower, inhale press, exhale back four. One more, second set, inhale forward, exhale lower, inhale press, exhale back, downward facing dog. Left foot can come towards center as the right leg lifts straight up and back. Pause in your three-legged dog, even pressuring the hands, pushing down and forward, hips shifting up and back. Right knee and toes point downward as you lift through the right inner thigh. Release the left heel downward as you lift along the front of the left leg. Again, pulling up that tight stocking as you lengthen the leg. Look to the top of your mat. Exhale, lunge the right foot forward. Create a long stride, maybe giving the ankle a hand to bring it further forward. Blocks or fingertips on either side of the front foot. Melt the back knee down. So again, have this experience of sloppy hips <laughs> uh, or relaxed hips, you know, watching, uh, watching the movie hips, um, let the hips be heavy, and then scissor the legs in. Right heel pulls back, left knee draws forward, again, option to pad the back knee. Hands to the front thigh, interlace the fingers. Press the elbows straight, prop up the chest, collarbones broad, shoulder blades down the back. And extend through the knees, reach back through the left heel, reach forward through the right knee, scissor and expand. So it can be a, you can experience this as a pulse, draw in, expand, draw in, expand. Or that you can see how those things can work simultaneously. Okay, arms to your sides, shoulders back, palms forward. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Draw the arms into the, uh, to the backward plane, the backside plane. <laughs> uh, and then look up, gaze up, tilt, chin tilts up, lift into the heart, look back, curl back, into the unknown. So this is the back bend. Scissor the legs. Expand. Contract and expand. Soften the edges of the mouth. And then bring the chest forward. 
Uh, scissor the legs once again, prop up the chest. Uh, right arm extends along, oh sorry, left arm extends along the left ear, draw back through the sides of the waistline. Shift uh, the left elbow to the outside of the right thigh. Use the pressure of the elbow against the thigh to revolve the left ribs towards the right. Slide the elbow down, armpit towards the thigh if available. If available, hands together, but thumbs to the sternum. Broaden out through the elbows, broaden across the collarbones, lift through the back inner upper thigh, back knee lifts off the floor, optional. Look up, optional. Be in your twist. Look down, hands down, press back, downward facing dog, walk it out, reacquaint, and third set of push-ups. Inhale forward to plank, exhale lower, inhale press, exhale back, downward facing dog. Inhale forward, exhale lower, inhale press, exhale back two. Inhale forward, exhale lower, inhale press, exhale back three. Inhale forward, exhale lower, inhale press, exhale back four. Last one, we're going to change it up. Inhale forward, plank, exhale lower down, chaturanga. Roll over the tops of the toes, push down into your hands, come up upward facing dog, hold. Push down with the feet so the kneecaps are lifted up off the floor. Front of the knees, front of the hips, front of the thighs, up off the floor, shoulders back, collarbones broad, sides and neck back, possibly take the gaze up, tone the legs, then roll over the feet, push up and back, downward facing dog, walk it out. Whew. Okay, practicing, continuing our practice of hopping to the top of the mat with Silence with control. <laughs> I, I, I hesitate to use the word control. Okay, uh, I don't know why though. Take your gaze to the top of your mat. Lift onto your toes. Draw back through the side of the waistline. Shift the shoulders forward a few inches. As you exhale, pull your belly button strongly into your spine. And with no breath, lift the hips high. And right at the top of your mat. Hop or step back. Four more. Bend the knees, lift through the sides of the waistline, shift the shoulders forward, ground through the knuckles, lift to the top of your mat. <sighs> Arrive. Hop or step back. <sighs> Two more. Okay, this time, if you're near a wall, you might spontaneously uh, burst into a handstand. Anything's possible. <sighs> Whoa. Or you could uh, fall first, head first into a candle. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Feet hip width distance. Lift and spread your toes. Place them back down. Bend your knees. Rest your torso on your thighs. Let it all hang down. Let the upper body fold forward. Releasing to the pull of the earth. Take hold of opposite wrist, forearms, or biceps, and then start to move in a way that may help you to let go. So shift the weight from right to left, front to back, inside and outside of your foot. Sway your arms, your shoulders, your head from side to side, front to back. Arrive here in this shape. Back with your body. Okay, maybe eventually come into a more uh, less movie, less wiggly <laughs> expression of this shape. Notice the breath. Recognize this uh, idea of synchronization of energy or movement with the breath. 
as you inhale, you might uh, try to cultivate a sense of energy, a flowing of movement up the backs of your legs from the earth to the tops of the hips. As you exhale, that energy flows down the length of the spine, out through the elbows, out through the crown of the head. Okay, fingertips to the floor in front of you. Begin to push your feet down, lift your hips up, Janu Banda, engage the quadriceps, lift the kneecaps. And from this, with the hips and legs as they are, inhale to bring your fingertips to your shins for the half lift. Coming up a little higher with the length of the fingertips added, Exhale, fold in. Fingertips to blocks or to the floor. Let the head hang down as you exhale. Inhale, lift halfway. Fingertips to the shins, shoulder blades on the back, collarbones broad. Exhale, fold in. Last time here, inhale. Ardha Uttanasana, half forward fold. And exhale, deeply fold in. Now push down through the feet with your next inhale, circle your arms out, up and overhead, push down, reach up, look up, palms touch, and then draw the hands through heart center, roll the shoulders back as you bring the hands to your sides, palms forward, Tadasana, arrive in your mountain in this strong, uh, courageous shape. So the you're standing tall, your chest is open. And as we come to this practice, as we come to this shape, um, more and more it becomes a, uh, a frequent position where every time we're coming to it, we're cultivating these same um, qualities, this sense of rising from the earth, growing tall, growing strong. There's a stability, there's again this idea of courage associated with this shape. Recognize uh, physically, emotionally, and mentally what starts to come up or where, the, where you start to arrive at when you, uh, when you move the body into this place. And so recognize that the more you practice this shape, you may have access to this off your mat. So by coming physically into this shape, you might draw some of those qualities into your uh, momentarily, your, into your uh, present experience. As you inhale next, sweep your arms overhead, look up as you reach up, palms touch. Exhale, gently bend your knees as you flow forward. Hands to the floor blocks. Inhale, fingertips to shins, halfway lift. Exhale and flow forward. Head release, fingertips to the floor. Inhale, push the feet down, possibly circle your arms out and up as palms touch overhead or bring the arms forward for a change. Exhale, hands through heart center and arms to your sides, Tadasana. Let's do two more half sun salutations with the pace of your breath. Begin. back in Tadasana and we are going to uh, turn the uh, turn, uh, come to uh, standing 
with the feet together, or if the feet uh, do not come together when you stand, uh, you can place a block between your thighs if you have one at its lowest setting. If, you, if your feet can't come together, option to do things a different way. <laughs> option to uh, use the prop just as a way to connect with your body in a new way. Okay, so push down through your feet, tone the muscles up your legs, arms to your sides, palms forward, inhale, sweep the arms up, interlace the fingers, cross the thumbs, point the index fingers, grow tall, exhale, upper body to the left, hips shift to the right, ground through the heels, especially the outer right heel, possibly use the left arm to draw the right side body long. If there is pain or compression in the low back, a uh, good option to take the left hand to the hip, push down with the hips, lift up out of the low back for support when you need it. Uh, gaze forward, gaze up, connect breath, connect um, <laughs> sensitive, sensitivity to the right side body, along the hip, along the waistline, between the ribs, shoulder, soften the face. Inhale, come back to center. Switch the interlace of your fingers, opposite thumb in front. Grow tall as you inhale and exhale, upper body to the right. Hip shift left. Squeeze the block if you have it. Root down through the heels. Bring the hand to the hip for support. So if you feel unsafe, if you feel like your practice is hurting you and not expanding your boundaries, then Use the support when and where you can. Take the gaze to the sky. I want this uh, to be sustainable. <laughs> I want this to be a lifelong practice for myself. Uh, maybe you want that for yourself as well. If so, it's, it takes a lot of listening, I think. Ground through the outer heel. Listen to the left side. Inhale back to center. And either keep your arms overhead or interlace the fingers behind the back, shoulder blades together. I'm going to keep my arms overhead, but um, this is your yoga. Lift up out of your waistline. If the arms are overhead, draw them back behind the biceps without jutting the ribs together. Push down through the feet, engage the legs, turn the chin up. Inhale to grow tall, broaden the chest. Exhale, arms back, gaze back, curl back as you know, into the unknown. Ribs forward, chest forward, arms forward, head comes up last, arms to your sides, shoulders forward, up, back, shoulders forward, down, back, couple of shoulder rolls in both directions. Back to Tadasana, inhale, arms up. Exhale, gently bend your knees as you fold forward, fingertips to the floor, to the block, release the head, and walk out your forward fold. A little awkward with the block, but still can be done. Bend the knees one at a time, releasing tension from the low back as the upper body hangs forward. Okay, keep doing this. If, feel, if it feels okay for the knees, lift onto the toes, bend the knees forward, sink the hips to the heels. Once, twice, thrice, and come back up. Fold forward. Push the feet down, lift the kneecaps up, lift into the hips, lengthen the crown of the head towards the floor. Inhale, fingertips to the shins, half lift. Exhale, fold, fingertips down, head releases. Inhale, circle up, gaze up, palms up. Exhale, hands to heart center, arms to your sides. Arms forward. Let's just go ahead and grab that strap if you have it. Strap, shoulder width, hands shoulder width distance apart. Holding the strap, this is familiar. Arm, knuckles reach forward, arms plug into the shoulder sockets. Push down through the feet, squeeze the legs together, or squeeze the block with the thighs. Okay, sweep the strap overhead, keeping it taut, pull taut, shoulders on the back, shoulders down the back, biceps behind the ears. As you exhale, 
Squeeze the block or squeeze knees and ankles as you sit the hips back into the chair. Uh, shift weight back to your heels at the top as you sit into your chair. Look up as you reach up. Inhale back to standing. Exhale, sink your hips into your fiercely awkward chair. Look up at the bottom. Inhale, grow tall, look forward. That's two. Exhale, hips down, chest up, gaze up. Inhale, stand up. Two more. Exhale, lower. Weight shifts to the heels, waistline back, gaze up. Inhale, stand. Last one, we're going to hold it. Exhale, sit down, keep breathing. Weight in the hips, weight in the heels, waistline back, arms up, look up, soften the edges of the mouth for five, four, three, two, one. Push down to stand, release the strap. Strap and block off to the side. One more standing pose. Feet together. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, left arm underneath the right arm. Palms together or grab shoulders. Elbows down. <sighs> I don't know which. I switched the legs and now I'm having a confusing time about switching. I switched the arms, now I'm having a confusing time about switching the legs. Sit down into your awkward bar stool. Lift the left, right leg over the left. Point the toes, sink the hips down, elbows down, upper body back, hook the foot around the ankle. If that does not feel safe or sustainable, don't choose not to do it. Elbows down, chest lifts, upper body back, weight in the heel, soften the gaze on the floor, on the wall, soften the face for five, four, three, two, and one. Stand back up. Sweep the arms overhead, this time left arm underneath right, elbows down, palms together, shoulders, elbows down, chest lifts, sit down into your imaginary awkward stool, right foot grounds, left leg lifts, point the toes, attempt to wrap the foot, but if it does not feel sustainable or safe for the knees, I recommend not doing it. <laughs> That's why I'm not doing it. Elbows down, chest lifts up and back. Heels down and boundaries change. So always listen. Change will come. It may not be in the ways you expect. Heel down, chest up and back. Five, four, three, two, and one. Straighten, sweep up, and release the arms to the sides. Okay. Find some wall space. Slide your mat to the baseboard of the wall. And if you have blocks, these will be very handy here. So uh, two blocks, um, one at the baseboard of the wall. There's three settings on the block, the lowest, mid, high. Um, I'm going to go for high today. I did mid yesterday. And I'm just feeling like I want high today. So um, listen. <laughs> Listen, find some acceptance around where you are, um, and uh, lie on your back with the, the block at the baseboard, and push your feet down, lift your hips up, slide your second block underneath your pelvis, so that, um, so if you want to see what not to do, what not to do is this, I don't want the hips dumping down the front of the pelvis tilting forward. Um, so I want the lower spine long, so I'm going to take the block down here and place my feet against the wall. And that might take a little bit of adjustment time to get the legs straight, the feet on the block, the hips uh, supported on the second block. Or even you can have two blocks underneath the hips if you're prop, if you're prop rich. Um, <laughs> Uh, reach through the heels, lengthen through the tailbone, tilt your chin down, tuck your shoulders under. So for an alternative to this, if you're like, I don't have blocks um, right now, you know, 
<laughs> um, then come back to the hero pose and you can start to recline in the hero pose. So meaning uh, the hips are between the heels, either on the floor or a block, the knees are bent forward. You can come back onto the hands behind you or you can uh, come back down onto, uh, you can bend your elbows and come down to the forearms behind you or you can even lie back um, depending on your comfort, what your body, you know, continue to be in conversation as you change the shape. So again, if you've come into this shape and the setting of your blocks is too extreme or is uh, not doing it for you, then, you know, change the setting of your blocks. We're going to be here for a little while, so, um, so get into an optimal, uh, an optimal support system. <laughs> So as you arrive here, notice what you're feeling. So rather than, again, viewing the practice as the, in service to these shapes, we're not, go, we're not coming to our mats so that these shapes can be achieved and documented and photographed. We're coming to the mat so that uh, we're doing these shapes so that we might be listening deep, more deeply to our bodies, creating or strong connections between body, uh, body and mind, our physical, emotional, and mental uh, well-being. Okay, and for time's sake, we're going to get out of that, um, that juicy shape. <laughs> uh, push the feet onto the floor, lift the hips up, remove the block from underneath the hips, and uh, just rest for a moment. So two options for neutralizing between back bends. Um, it's, it's always um, warned against not pulling the knees directly into the hips when you plan to do uh, more back bends. So to uh, more uh, subtly neutralize the spine, you might take the knees together uh, with the feet as wide as the mat. Just let the knees fall into each other, gently widening the hips and perhaps lengthening the low back. Or you might just lengthen the legs out. And just take a moment after that, um, that supported bridge pose to notice where you're feeling, what you're feeling. And with that delightful squeal, we are going to begin our building our bridge. So pull your heels in towards your hips. Keep your feet and ankles, knees, uh, knees, <laughs> feet and ankles, hip width distance apart. And you might, you may slide a block between your thighs. So this is going to keep your knees from splaying apart. Keep your low back uh, extended and safe from. Uh, taking the brunt of the back bends. Okay, so squeeze the block if you have one between your thighs, arms at your sides, push the feet down, lift the hips up. Imagine extruding the block downward, so as though your thighs are moving down and pushing the block to the earth as your hips lift up. And then lower the hips. You can remove the block, feet as wide as the mat, knees together, or extend the legs straight. You can put your hands on your chest and your abdomen. You might reconnect with the breath through this uh, external physical sensation as well as the internal experience of your breath.
Okay. Building bridges, part two. Block between the thighs, if you like that. Arms by your sides, feet down, hips lift. Interlace the fingers this time. Tuck the shoulders underneath the chest. Lengthen the back of the neck as you push the feet down. Lift the outer hips up. Extrude the block to the floor. Look down the front line of your body. Recognize incongruency to the two sides of, sides of your bridge. And if you notice that external expression is not reflecting an internal balance, then how do you adjust? Think about it. How do you move the pose from within? Slowly lower the hips, remove the block, feet apart, knees together, hands to the body, mind to the breath, and where's your bridge going today? What bridge, what bridges do you need to build? Um, again, be receptive. Consider all the factors. There is a lot of factors. There's the ego factor um, that, you know, might, yeah, there's a lot, there's just a lot of factors. <laughs> but it's also, we're on our mats, and what you do here, although, you, you know, pretty much the main thing is don't hurt yourself. Um, but beyond that, you know, this is, hopefully this feels like a safe space for exploration, where you can make quote unquote mistakes. <laughs> you can choose the wrong, you can choose something and it doesn't work out. That's okay. Um, again, this is a, this is a safe space. Um, okay, so I'm going to offer a wheel pose. So if you would like to do wheel pose, one great and introductory uh, method to this is to take your two blocks that you may or may, may not have, place them at an angle against your wall space, and uh, have, turn around so that your head is between the blocks, and you can place your hands on the blocks, fingertips pointing down towards the floor, down towards your shoulders, elbows pointing up. Heels in towards your hips, and if you have a third block, just go ahead and throw it between your thighs. Some people are like, three blocks? Who owns three blocks? Uh, probably, most likely, a yoga teacher. <laughs> okay, heels in towards the hips, uh, hands to the blocks, place the hands on the blocks if you're doing wheel or do a pose we have done before or another back bend or rest. Uh, push the feet down, lift the hips up, come to the top of the nose, roll towards the bridge of your nose, walk your feet in, and all together now, one, two, three, push your arms straight. Shoulders over the wrists, gaze between the uh, blocks, gaze between the hands. Boy, I chose the wrong block to put between my thighs. So if you have that block between your thighs, that's not making it easier. Lengthen through the tailbone, breathe. Hey, just for the heck of it, you can walk your way up the wall, hands to the wall, Come on up if you're practicing those um, drop backs and, and stand ups. Press down through the feet, lift into the legs, lengthen down through the spine, gaze up, arms overhead, arms back, look back, reach back, curl back, hands to the wall, come back down into your wheel pose, and then come all the way back down. What a trip. Feet apart, knees together, or legs straight. Hand back to the body, mind back to the breath. Invite yourself back here, experience the resonant energy of whatever you just did. There's an immediate resonant energy, there's a, um, there's a a lifelong, <laughs> centuries long, universe long, resonant energy in this moment. Don't miss it.
Okay, as much as I want to do more back bends, I'm going to stop us there so that we can release the low back before um, entering into our most challenging pose of Savasana. Okay, so uh, once again, lie on your back. Draw your left knee in and up towards your left armpit. Interlace your fingers. Hug it in. Hug it up. Squeeze that knee. Squeeze that thigh. Transition into half happy baby. Angling the sole of the foot skyward. Shin perpendicular to the floor. Grab the foot outside with the left hand. Inside with the right hand. Interlace the fingers. And push or kick the foot into the hands. Kick the, with the foot and then pull with the hands. Draw the knee down towards the earth. Choose to stay. Is this interesting? <laughs> if it's not interesting enough, you can extend the right leg. Heel down, maybe calf down, maybe thigh down. disengage a little bit so this is uh, this is the cool down so start to embody that cooling down energy right foot back to the floor left leg hooks over right leg flex the left foot as you draw the uh, right thigh into the chest perhaps interlace the fingers behind the right thigh or if you need a deeper uh, expression, you can interlace the fingers in front of the right shin. Keep the foot flexed. Find some motion here, either drawing the uh, shin closer to the chest or shifting the shin from side to side. Predominantly targeting the left outer hip here. But if there's a, a different space, place where you feel this, um, explore that. Something else is saying, Hey, look at me. Respond. <laughs> okay. Uh, if uh, your knee is saying, "Hey, look at me. This hurts," then find a find a um, a modification. It's my recommendation. back to the floor, left foot back to the floor, right knee in and up towards the armpit, squeeze it in, interlace the fingers, and then transition to half happy baby, wrap the hands around the sole of the right foot, shin perpendicular, kick and pull, kick and pull a little bit, test the water, right left leg straightens, heel down, calf down, thigh down. Left foot back to the floor, right foot flex, right ankle over the left thigh. Wide the right knee away as you draw the left thigh closer, shin Parallel to the chest, interlace the fingers behind the left thigh or in front of the shin. Draw the shin in closer or shift the hips from side to side. Explore this general shape uh, with the intention of getting some relief, getting some extension in the outer hip where we did a lot of strength and contraction through the movements of our back bends today. left foot to the floor, right foot to the floor. Draw the knees up, feet up, clasp the knees, rock side to side with the knees cupped in the hands, massaging the low back, the sacral spine. Knees in and up towards the armpits, feet up to the ceiling, 
full on happy baby, side to side. Feet together, interlace the fingers, widen the knees apart, extend the low back. Reclined butterfly, reclined dog eagle. Long spine, long neck. And finally, say thank you. Show yourself love and appreciation for this time on the mat. Wrap your arms around your legs. Squeeze your legs in. Tuck your chin to your chest. Pull your forehead towards your knees. Tuck your tailbone towards your heels. Squeeze in. And then this, all this good loving energy you're pulling into yourself. Then just let it expand out, extend through your legs, extend through your arms. Um, I am going to invite you to take legs up the wall in lieu of a traditional inversion today. So if you have a blanket or a bolster, you might slide it, uh, slide your mat to the baseboard of an un uninterrupted wall. Take your blanket or bolster to that wall. Get your creature comforts, not the beer, but uh, you know your blankies and whatnot. Um, have those things available. If you like to use the strap for legs at the wall, as I've been instructing lately, uh, get your strap with its 12 inch loop in it. Slide your hips to the wall. Swing your legs up the wall, scooch your hips onto the height of your blanket or bolster or a firm pillow. And then take the strap around your ankles, extend your legs up towards the ceiling. If you have that blankie or an eye pillow or uh, that article of clothing that makes you feel safe and comfortable, Get those items at this time. Settle your shoulder blades beneath you, turn your palms up. And if you come to a shape, whether it's legs up the wall or traditional savasana lying on your back, and uh, there is a physical or an emotional discomfort then I, I'm encouraged, I would encourage you to um, possibly intuit a shape that might feel more so supportive, more comfortable. I know I mentioned this recently that there was a time in my practice when um, a child's pose uh, or a, a posture um, where I was folded over a bolster was uh, a more uh, a more supported or safe uh, place for me to practice uh, this final resting, this final reflective uh, moment. So invite yourself into this space once again. There, I'm thinking of class today with as having kind of three touchstone moments when our initial check-in with our seated posture, our hero's pose, kind of a calling of our attention, a grounding, a um, arrival of the senses in the body, an invitation to occupy the physical, uh, the physical being. And then there was uh, a little later on, we had to check in with our mountain pose, where we were cultivating that uh, sense of strength, sense of stability, of courage, oneness with the earth. And now this is 
our this is our uh, corpse pose. This is our uh, practicing practicing corpse pose. Practicing the death of the practice. Um, and what does what does that look like? It's a reflection of what has transpired thus far. opportunity to feel movement, feel sensation in the physical body as we bring as we bring this being, as we bring our embodiment to a state of rest. of Savasana after a um, class dominated by backbending actions, it might be uh, difficult to arrive in this space. Often with backbends, we are pushing ourselves uh, we are ex exploring our boundaries, expanding our boundaries, questioning what feels uh, safe. And often, uh, back beds are associated with um, <laughs> with a lot of emotion. So we really uh, s stirred the pot today. Um, got things mixed up, you know, got some agitated, <laughs> agitated the, the uh, senses. So that can be difficult to come into this time after that. And that's, that's part of the practice. <laughs> physical being settled. Trust the support of the earth, support uh, props, support of uh, those comfort items.
Movement back to your physical extremities, starting with the fingers and toes. Wiggle the ears, the tip of your nose. Slide your heels down the wall. If they're up the wall, remove the strap. Extend your left arm along the left ear and roll onto your left side. Transition from corpse pose into this fetal position, reconnecting with breath. Keeping the eyes closed, push your way into a seated shape. Bring your hands onto your heart. Feel the swell of each breath, the ebb of each breath. Can you feel the more subtle beat of your own heart? We'll close practice with a single sound of OM. Exhale your breath. Inhale for OM. Thank you for your presence, your patience, your um, receptivity <laughs> throughout the practice. Uh, the light in me recognizes, honors, and bows to the light in each of you. Namaste. guys. Um, if you have any questions, uh, requests, comments, or concerns <laughs> about class, please let me know. I'm missing right now the time after class where I just, you know, we just get to talk about, uh, talk about how you feel, um, what you're doing the rest of the day. Uh, yeah, so um, I want to know those things just because we're not in the same room. I still want to know. So, uh, yeah, get in touch with me. I apologize, my Facebook um, presence is uh, somewhat non-existent. <laughs> I go on there every once in a while, but it's just not my favorite forum right now. Um, so, if you uh, w do want to get in touch, um, please do so via the, um, the Athens Public access uh, email address that those will get to me or um, if you have you know a more direct way of contacting me uh, my, my personal email address or my personal phone number I would love to hear from you there too so um, yeah let's uh, let's stay connected let's keep practicing and um, I will be here tomorrow at 5:30 for that's the class I try, I really try hard to keep that one to an hour. So that's a little faster pace, um, different vibe. Just if you practice yoga at different times a day, I definitely have a different mindset going into a um, evening class than a morning class. So join me there if you can, uh, 5.30 Eastern time. Summer. That was my, that was my final party thought, summer.